On today's show, I'm going to finish with quite a few more of the counterfeits and expose them to you so that you'll be fully equipped to never enter into any of these deceptions. See you on the show. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. And what I want to do on today's show is I want to just take the time to go through a few more of those deceptive practices that are out there by the enemy and that um, even some of them that I had when I was in the New Age had designed to be able to wean people like yourself or believers in Jesus away from their faith. And so I want to be able to just really expand on them. And one of them I've mentioned a few times, but I'm going to need to drill down on it for you because I really want you to understand that most of what's around that we often get deceived with, it is actually deception, but it starts off with someone spiritually hungry for the spirit world. And that's how a lot of the new age people end up being deceived in the new age. But the one thing that I want to talk about is crystals. I probably get asked this question through emails and through social media and texts and all sorts of things about, well, what's wrong with crystals? Because aren't they made from the ground? Aren't they part of God's creation? Well, let me explain it to you. And I'm going to tell you a real life history of a person who actually was quite famous in the world of crystals. Basically, yes, God did create crystals. He did create the things that are in the ground that people use as crystals or on necklaces and all types of stones and different things that that exist. Um, That part is true, but the part about them holding an energy that's going to help you is not true. And let me tell you why. The actual founder of or who was known as probably the ultimate teacher and founder of the belief system of that crystals had energies and healing energies and those types of things. His name was Randall Bayer. Now, what he did is he lived in a city in California where he built his whole backyard and built pyramids, pyramid shapes, where he would go into those pyramids, believing there was special energy in it. And he would sit in those pyramids and wait for wisdom from, guess what? Spirit guides, the same that I had when I was in the New Age. Spirit guides coming to give wisdom about different things. He would have spirit guides come to him and give him wisdom about crystals and tell him that this type of stone would have this energy. This type of stone could have healing. This type of stone was for something else. This was for something else. And what happened is that he um, he would continue to do that. And he then wrote a book, book called The Crystal Connection. I go into greater detail of all this actually in my book, um, Authentic Awakening, that you can purchase at any time, get to my website or my app or on Amazon. But because I go a bit further into this being such a critical topic these days, because there's so many Christians that are using crystals when they don't need to do that. So Randall um, would continue to do this wisdom, set up a book called The Crystal Connection, which actually in the New Age became almost like a sacred Bible on crystals. But there was a group of Christians that actually, as they believed that he was being deceived, they wanted to help him, but he refused help from them. So what they did is they decided that they would pray. They would pray for this man, for Randall Bayer, pray for things to be exposed. This is actually a good lesson on learning how to pray for people uh, that are actually in the New Age. So they took authority and they actually commanded, these Christians as they were praying, commanded for those spirit guides to expose themselves as what they really were, which was demons coming to deceive Randall. Well, one day he's out there in his pyramid and then he's looking and his spirit guides arrive. But very soon what happens is the countenance and the, the, the look of the spirit guides all of a sudden was not light anymore. It became dark and full of evil. In fact, they were so grotesque looking. He was so scared that he ran down the street where he was in and continued to run until he hit a church, went inside, found someone who then prayed for him and then um, allowed him to invite Jesus into his heart. And then he became a believer for Jesus, which is very powerful. So then what does he do? Similar to my journey, where he now needs to get rid of all of the deception and work out what God really wants for him in his life. 
The interesting thing is that he, um, he, one thing that he wanted to do was think, oh, because sometimes he would hold meetings and he'd have 1,000, 2,000, sometimes 5,000 people in his seminars about crystals. And um, so he thought, well, I've got a few seminars coming up. I'm going to tell everyone the truth. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. I'm going to tell them about how they weren't spirit guides. They weren't nice. They were actually evil. And he's going to tell them the whole story. Well, what happened is he got in front of the first crowd and he started to tell them and people started standing up, standing up, standing up and walking away uh, from the seminar and totally left. And then it happened again and again. And he found that no one wanted to hear even though it was his true experience, nobody wanted to hear. So he, he wasn't sure what to do. So the next thing he thought is that because he tried telling them that Jesus was a better way, the same as my testimony that I found that Jesus was a better way. He decided to write to lawyers to get his book out of publication, but they wouldn't allow it because it was a publisher and they owned it. He couldn't do it. So he managed to finally through lawyers get a document written that would go in the back of that book, The Crystal Connection, and actually say his testimony and how he completely denounces and renounces all the stuff about crystals and then none of it's true. It was just all deception. Do you know that what's funny is I know some people that actually still read The Crystal Connection, even some believers in Jesus do it which is very, very interesting. I don't understand how they could even think of doing that. And then when I've asked them, what's in the back of the book, have you read it? And they go, oh, yeah, but that doesn't matter. So what? It's spiritual, which is showing you what's happening in, the, in our land and it's happening in the world is that people are starting to be compromised and weaning down. So crystals, do they have healing energies? Do they not have them? No, they don't yet. I want you to know that some places that sell a lot of these crystals will actually pray over those crystals to, to put energy into them or to do that type of thing. It doesn't mean the stone itself has an energy, but if someone prays, which basically is a curse, I'm not talking about a Christian prayer. I'm talking about praying over to put other Hindu gods or Buddhist or whatever onto those objects of crystals or stones, you will be then taking them into your house or using them. Now, let me give you an example. You, you, am I saying yes, that a, a little piece of rock could, could hold something? Yes, God used to talk about it in the Old Testament about idols and that the idols needed to be pulled down. He didn't say to Gideon, go out and just look at the idol and repaint it. He said, destroy them, pull them down. Idols can be uh, not only idols to our spirit, but also idols to, to hold spirits in them. And I've witnessed that myself in certain New Age shops that I've gone into. And, and there are spirits that are assigned to it. But we have the authority. So if we pray over that, then we're not, nothing's going to affect us because we have authority to, to get rid of that. But our, an example, there was a friend of mine came to me and he always thought I was a bit crazy after coming out of the new age. But he came to me and he said that his daughter was constantly getting sick and constantly getting sick. And um, so I went around to their house and he actually, she actually had this big crystal on her. She was a, a Christian and a believer in Jesus, but had this crystal. And I said, how long have you had that? And I really felt the discernment and a prophetic word that I needed to talk to her to be able to get rid of that. And um, she, she then said, oh, I've had it for about two years. And I said, how long have you had these problems? It was to do with suicidal thoughts and all sorts of different things. And she said, oh, about the same amount of time since I got this. Where did you get it? Our friend gave it to me. I thought it would be fine. Doesn't everyone have crystals and use it for healing? What's wrong with that? They would say to me. So in the end, I decided, I said, look, I need to do this. But if you want to, let me show you something. So I got them, the husband, uh, sorry, the father to go and get the crystal and put it on the ground. And this was all led by the Holy Spirit. I said, get a hammer and try and smash it. And he got a hammer and no matter how hard he hit it, it would not smash. It would not break. It would not chip. It would not do anything. Now, remember, this is being led by the Holy Spirit, not my own wisdom here. And I said, OK, now let's pray over it. Let's pray and bind any spirit that's been assigned to that to be gone. As soon as we prayed over, I said, OK, get the hammer. And I don't even want you to hit it hard. I want you to hit the rock. The whole thing disintegrated. You see, it was held by a spirit in the natural world. I know sometimes we think, wow, well, can that really happen? Well, it did happen and I've seen it happen many times. The key thing, though, is just come back to the fact that crystals don't, they're nice stones. Go ahead. If you feel like you want to have a stone, go right ahead and do it. But you're going to need to pray and know where you got it from because they are assigned with different spirits. So, and I'm saying that out of my own experience. And that's what we used to do when we're in the new age. We used to pray over those things and pray over people's necklaces and pray over stuff so that it could be, we thought it was good, but it was deceptive, but they, they would hang it around the neck or they would use it for different things in their house. 
As far as I'm concerned, you don't need idols. You don't. That's another idol. And Randall Bayer, as I said, who is the founder of all of it and initiated all of it, he doesn't even believe in it. It's not even. It's not even existence. So we, if you want to follow back, then that's what you need to follow back to is the origin of it and know that it was a false, deceiving thing from the very beginning. So hopefully that explained a little bit more about crystals for you. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, and I mentioned this before, was about the universe. I really want you to understand that God created the world. God created the universe. He, God created everything that exists in it. And if we can give God the glory, not the universe, every time I hear that the universe did this for me, the universe did that for me, first it has no power to do that. But what you're doing is you're taking away the glory to God. So I just wanted to remind you about that, how important that is. I often get asked about the human potential movement. Let me just do this quite quickly for you because I was involved in that. There is a lot out there in the human potential movement right now. I'm not saying all of them are deceptive. I'm not saying all of them are con connected to the new age. Quite a few of them are. I haven't come across too many that are not, rather than going into the human potential movement. You don't need to. All that does is promote self and promote you as God. I won't mention any names here, but I did work with a lot of people that are still around today that are high names in the human potential movement. But you must know, it's a movement that's attached to the New World Order, and it's a movement that's attached to purposely try and get people to focus on themselves rather than on a God in the sense of that, and that they are God. So it's important that you start to look at these things and make a decision. If, if I can just leave you with one major thing today is make a decision just like I did. No longer follow man's wisdom, man's ways. I want to be more motivated. I want to be potential. I want to be richer. I want to get, get rich. So I'll do this seminar. I'll do that seminar. I'll do that seminar. The Bible talks about wise counsel. This what I, is what I decided to do. I decided I wanted things in my life that could bless me and I wanted the fruits of the Spirit. And all I did was I went to the Word of God. I made a commitment. Now, when I make a commitment, I keep to it. When I made a commitment that I would go to the Word of God only, does that mean I don't read other books? Of course I read books. I read articles. I read things all the time. But as far as the direction of my life on who's going to teach me something, then I only go to the Word. Or I go to believers in Jesus that I know that know the Word and have followed the Word. In fact, if someone, you want to have wise counsel, the best thing is find someone who's got what you've got, but they got it by going to the Word and by God. And by going to that, then that's wise counsel and you can learn from them in that aspect for what you need to do. You do not need to seek these demonic things that are all planned. It's just a warning so that you don't go into that level. I mean, I can remember very quickly, I wanted to get out of debt. And so people are going, go to this seminar, go to that seminar. Christians are saying, go here, go there. All of them are all human potential movement seminars. I know that half the teachers in it. What I wanted to do is find someone who was in debt as a believer of Jesus, who then got out of debt using God's words, because then I get wise counsel, because that's what I wanted to do. So I'm just encouraging you to leave everything else behind, make a commitment, just follow God's word and follow his ways. Amen. Did you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, Astral Travel, Psychic and Palm Readings, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. 
Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com, to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Hi, welcome back. And in the last segment, I was talking about the human potential and learning from the God, God's Word rather than doing that. The other thing that you need to be careful of is in the area of healing. Um, there's so much, and it's on purpose, but there's so much teaching that is in from Eastern and New Age teaching about healing. And the, the reason there is so much, and as I said before, I was part of the plan of that. The reason there's so much is that they want that's their aim. The globalists and the New Age people and all the leaders, their aim is to be able to get you to be weak and not healthy in your life. So all sorts of plans. I'm not going to go into them, but all sorts of plans, but especially with the New Age, holistic type medicines and type of things. I mentioned a little bit about medicines last time. This time I'm talking about healing in the sense of energies and all that sort of stuff. You need to find someone that is just a normal medical doctor. And then even then, you've still got to check for yourself what, what is it that you need. Be, I'm, I'm doing this again to equip you in to be careful and to warn you not to run down into anything and everything and every person that's supposedly the healer and every food will heal this and do this. Do your research. There's more than enough places to do research about food. There's more than enough researches to, to do with um, oils and all sorts of stuff. Just do your research and find. There's a lot of Christians around that have got great businesses that are dedicated and praying and using what they need to do for certain healing things. There's lots of alternative um, uh, practices that are out there that some of them are great, others are not. And then there's others that are very deceptive and, and are planned from the New Age. So just again, be careful. If you've got healing, then first go to God. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, there's a gentleman in the Old Testament that died. And he died and God said, the reason he died is he didn't come to me first for healing. So to me, it's like, I go to God first. Why not? Why not go to God? Find out what's the best cure. Find out that. I shared on a much earlier show about God got me to do cabbage when I had a very tragic illness. And that helped as well as prayer did. So find out what God has for you. You know, it could be anything. I've known some people that God has challenged that the reason they have this disease is because they, had, they eat too much of this or too much of that, and God has shown them that. So inquire of God. The second thing you can do besides inquiring is then find healing scriptures. That's what I, I did. I remember once that I, I blew out my knee and, I, and it was all bent and, and, and all puffed up and everything, and I had to go and get the whatever it is, MRI or whatever they are, and they put fluid in and took all the x-rays and did everything they did. And they said, well, your, your knee will never be the same. We'll have to operate. Um, you'll, you won't be able to ski again. You won't be able to do an exercise at the gym or anything like that again. But at least, you know, we'll do the best with it. And I went out smiling and they said, what, what's wrong? I said, God's going to heal me. And then they laughed at me. Um, and this was a Christian medical doctor, by the way, and just laughed at me. And I said, that's fine. I spent three months just going to God. What do I do? How do I treat this? How do I, what am I supposed to do? And what am I not supposed to do? How do I do that? I got a scripture, a very simple healing scripture, and I would declare it over my knee anytime there was pain, anytime there was anything there. Nothing happened. It was bad and painful for three months. The th a day after the three months, when I woke up, my knee was back to normal. Um, it, it had no pain. It had nothing in it. There was no swelling. And in fact, it was about two or three months later, my wife and I went skiing and I skied for seven days. I had no problem. See, that's what God will do. And you go, God will do that? Yes, He will. I, and maybe I have the advantage because I'm not going to touch anything demonic. I'm not going to touch anything that's not God. I'm, I only trust God. I rely on Him so much. So I have a higher level of faith maybe, but I don't think it's about faith. I think I just trust Him. He's going to do what He says He's do. Now think about it. I trusted my guru for almost two decades. Anything He told me, even if I thought it was weird, I would go and do it. Isn't that strange? You'd be surprised what people will do. Um, when I was in the New Age, I used to train large companies. And there was one large company, an airline company in Australia. I can mention it because I was one of their trainers and that was Qantas. And it was interesting because I had sometimes would, and when I was in the new age I'm talking about, I would sometimes get them on the floor meditating and chanting. High level millionaire executives on the floor chanting. Why would they do that? Because I believed in what my guru said and what I was doing at that time. Well, now that I'm a believer of Jesus, I believe in the word. And I believe in him and I know it'll happen. So I do the same thing. I was asked um, recently about when I get strategies in companies, do you believe that's from God? Yes, I do. And because God will work, he says he will. And that's how I run my life. So I'm wanting to encourage you that you can do 
exactly the same thing. All right? Okay, one other thing I've got. To, this one's a, another one. Uh, when an, an angel comes, and I've talked about spirit guides, which is really just demonic spirits. It's all they are. They're just demons masquerading, as the Bible says, as angels of light. And they actually come and visit people like they did with Randall with the crystals and they visited him like they did and they visited me. And the thing I need to share about the Bible talks about that as a warning. Do you know how many there's so many religions and cults that have started over the years, so probably over the last hundred years at least, that have all started from an angel supposedly visiting them. The whole Mormon church, if you want to study it, the whole Mormon church comes from the fact that an angel called Moroni visited Joseph Smith, told him about some spectacles that were buried somewhere, that then when he would get the books that were buried somewhere else, he would have the new revelation, not the old Bible one, but the new revelation. Now, see, that was from an angel. Was that from God? Of course not. The same as the course of miracles that I was talking about. Was that Jesus? No, it was a demonic spirit. I'm not going to water it down for you. We just have to be careful. I mean, a whole movement like the Mormon church worldwide started from someone listening to an angel. Course of Miracles has sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of books around the world based on a demonic angel, a demonic fallen angel coming in and speaking to that woman to channel and spread the heresy of the fact that the Bible is an old Bible and you need new revelation. Now, when I say that, I even think, boy, that's, that sounds so weird. It's interesting because you remember way back we had planned it in our meetings, what we wanted to do and get people ready for stuff. I have people now that are even close to me that I know really well and have known for years are actually talking almost the same language. They haven't had spirit guides come to them, but they're starting to talk about, you know, maybe the Bible's not right. Maybe I need a high revelation. Maybe I need to find out the next enlightenment. Maybe I need to go to the next level. See, we have to be careful of what things that we're listening to, because even in the newspaper, I'm not even going to say anything that's not right. Even in the newspaper, they're pushing right now that the president of the United States, Biden, has actually become an ascended, an ascended Christian, an ascended Christian, meaning higher than normal Christianity. What sort of belief systems do you think that president wants to bring in as the ascended Christians, the ones that are higher than, say, you and I that just simply believe the Bible? What, what's going to happen in that sense? Where this, I can tell you right now, it's the one world religion. So the more you know the truth, Okay, and I said this, I think, on the first show. The more you know the truth of God and the truth in the Bible, the more you're going to stay away from deception. As we move, especially in these next few years, as we move forward, there, were, there will be a push. I know that because I still know of the people that are still alive that I knew that were in some of those meetings. They are going to push the one world religion. And I want to talk about that just quickly. The one world religion is a false religion. It is one where it'll be a blend of everything, everything from Muslim to, to Buddhism, to Hinduism, to Taoism, to, to New Age, to, you know, you know just you, you name it. You know, it's going to be a religion that where everyone's tolerant, where everybody is kind, everybody, which is nice. But what they're going to talk about with the tolerance is that us, the believers in the word, that we're old, we're stuck, we don't know what we do, and we need to be taught a lesson so that we will be enlightened. It's, it's a very interesting thing of what's happening. I'm even going to mention this now. Even in Canada, which is where I live since COVID started, it's, it's so powerful now of what is happening politically to the churches. There's been something like 25 churches burnt down. There's been five or six um, pastors have actually been arrested simply for holding church services. And most people are thinking, what is this? What is this? What is this? It's the politicians. It's not the politicians. It's Satan. It's the enemy. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. Steal, kill and destroy. He does not want that. And from the, the whole New World Order, the whole aim is to be able to have that new world order be able to easily with the one world religion through the world. And that's how they'll do it, through the easing of, of a compromised religion. So that then they'll start talking about things like, well, you know, you're not tolerant. You don't love us. You don't do this to us, to us that believe absolutely who Jesus is. And that's exactly what they'll be doing. They'll be saying those types of things. That's what we have to be careful of. Now, how do we be careful of that? Well, again, it's all about faith. 
And it's all about hope. And that's what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for. I want to let you know that we win. God wins. Everything wins. We have authority. I don't just sit around and wait because I was in the new age and I was doing all of that. And I'm aware of everything that their plan is. I'm not going to just sit around and wait. I can pro- I've got weapons. I told you about them before. I have truth. I have authority. I have the word of God. There's so many weapons and I have prayer. I know that when I pray, not because of my ability, but because the word of God says that when I pray, God goes out to fulfill that word. He will go out and fulfill it. So that's all we need to be doing is standing up and praying. We just need to be praying and praying and praying with faith that everything will be okay, And it will. Now, more importantly, get to know the word of God so you know what you're praying and you'll then know the will of God as well. So uh, just a couple more things I wanted to just wrap up here. And that is one is the age of enlightenment. You might not. I'll put it this way. You'll start hearing that soon. Even more so. Um, The age of enlightenment, before I mentioned the age of Aquarius, which was in the 60s and the 70s and the harmonic conversion and all that sort of stuff to do with spiritual things. Um, And then I mentioned about how they're they're wanting to remove the Christians to spiritually evolve them at some point. And then on top of that, that there's life on other planets, there's UFOs, there's people doing all of that. And that's to cover up what they're wanting to do. And personally, and I'm going to throw this out because I was in the demonic. I know what demonic is. I've actually seen um, demonic demons actually manifest as if they are the little aliens and the little stuff. So to me, I know what they are. They're they're simply just demonic beings. That's all they are trying to fool everything. And there's a whole plan around that. So but this age of alignment, the reason I want to enlightenment, the reason I want to mention this is you're going to start to hear this more and more, a little bit in the news, a little bit on the fringe, but it'll start becoming common. There was a gentleman called Edgar Casey. A lot of people think he was a Christian. He was not a Christian. He was um, someone that believed in Christ consciousness and new age Jesus and Hindu Jesus and all that stuff. He set up a thing called the Association for Research and Enlightenment. But he Edgar Casey, don't, if you've got his books, get rid of them. You don't need his wisdom. You only need God's. But he's the one that founded that. And it's going to be a bigger push and a bigger push of this whole um, age of enlightenment so that we're all enlightened. And those of us that don't want to be enlightened and we're happy with the word of God, this, this is where there'll be a pushback. They can't attack us. It's got nothing to do with that. We have authority over it, but this is where the pushback will be. And I just really wanted to, to share that with you, those few points, so that you again know how powerful faith is, how powerful hope is, how powerful God is. And I just pray that that is constantly continuing to be over you in the name of Jesus. See you next time on The Truth Project next week. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered, and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, ebooks you can download, and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates, and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.